Hi there, Chris here, another quick tip for you all. In this video, we are gonna talk about brush strokes and the importance they play. And for those that are relatively new to the hobby, that they, this is ba basically a bit of a uh, explanation as to the uh, what we're talking about in terminologies uh, when we are dealing with uh, painting and what you might see elsewhere on the internet as far as uh, techniques are concerned because there is a lot of information out there and some of it can be a little bit confusing at times some of it even contradictory but that's no problem. It's really uh, just, you know, um, a lot of painters uh, learn at different rates, learn, some have more formal training and some are self-taught and do not have that formal training. And so you get terminologies kind of crossing over and things like that. So it can becomes kind of confusing at times, but uh, worry not, we will uh, endeavor to uh, clear up some of these things. Now I see, you can see here, I have an assortment of Citadel brushes. Now these are not the only brushes available to miniature painters, although these are readily available uh, in a lot of hobby stores. And for the most part, a lot of people getting into this hobby are starting off with uh, typically games workshop type products and uh, the games and such like that. So these are the more common things you are going to find around most hobby stores. Uh, if you are looking for a specific brand of brushes or kinds of brushes, uh, you're typically looking in art supply places and things like that. And and uh, you know you can find but again that comes with more of an experience as you become more comfortable with them uh, starting out in this hobby there's absolutely nothing wrong with the, this product here these brushes work very well for what you need them to do and of course they have a very nice little um, labeling system to help you kind of uh, determine what kind of jobs brushes are doing for example the shade brush it is a longer bristle and uh, it is good and it's got, obviously it's a very good size. It's bigger than the layer brush as we can kind of compare the sizes here. It's got longer bristles and it's more intended for dipping into the paints of the shade washes and applying them in that fashion. The base coating brush here, this is obviously it's got a, it's a uh, kind of like a chisel like shape. It's very broad. The bristles are about the same length as this, the layer brush, but of course you can see it's kind of flat looking. It's uh, broad and this is of course designed for obviously laying uh, larger amounts of paint onto a model surface and uh, being a bit more efficient in that regards where you're just kind of just dunking it into the paint and applying it to the model and this is good for you know like model surfaces like space marines and dreadnoughts and uh, th larger kind of models you know you, you can get some good coverage out of of course here we have this brush called uh, dry this is intended for dry brushing and dry brushing is a, a brush technique that we'll cover a little bit later but obviously you can see the bristles are really rough looking they don't look that way when you first buy the brush uh, but of course the technique itself will beat these bristles up like that and that is perfectly okay because again the technique really is rough on bristles but that's why it's good to have a brush dedicated to that particular technique as it will last you longer uh, as long as you know you're not using say for example this kind of brush to do this kind of technique you know this brush will last longer of course here this is a layer brush this is a brush that you're going to get a lot of use out of typically it's um this is uh, more like a number one size brush whereas this one's more like a number two number three kind of size brush uh if you're going to art supply stores and you know your the brushes have a numbering system this is more like a number one kind of size brush and this is basically your main workhorse as far as as, um, you know what kind of painting you're gonna do this is uh, really good for doing base coats which this brush is designed for but you know you can do the exact same job really with any of these brushes you can use this brush here to use uh, to do base coats as well and you know there's nothing wrong with that this brush here is simply a layered brush of course it's a medium layer brush but I mean uh, this one here I find I do almost all my painting with and uh, you know you can get into fine details because again it comes to a nice little point it's got a broad enough uh, bristle uh, size to it that uh, I can do you know legs and models and you know it, it's it's good for most projects most uh, regular kind of sized miniature single miniatures uh, I wouldn't really go about painting a Land Raider tank or anything like that that size of model with this brush and even this size brush is really not gonna get that job done very well you got to go up to a larger size brush 
So with brush stroke, obviously we've covered quickly just these brushes here. Now brush stroke really does pertain to pretty much any of these brushes. You can use any of these brushes uh, for initial uh, purposes. But when we're talking brush stroke, we are talking about when we draw the paint and apply it to the model surface. And as you can see here, some brushes, of course, uh, they'll have whatever blend of hairs they're using. Some will be very firm or some will be very soft, uh, depending on what kind of brush you're using and kind of uh, quality of brush you're using. Uh, for a lot of people who uh, wanna shop around for their own brushes, I often recommend uh, shopping within the watercolor line of paint brushes, as that's more akin to the kind of painting we do. We often are thinning the colors down to the point where it's like watercolor, and so those brushes tend to do the job for us very well. Uh, even some oil painting and things of that nature, uh, you know, you get some brushes here, like, you know, they're very designed for, towards like a pro kind of audience. And of course they have the much longer bristle length. But of course, again, these are more like the watercolor brushes. And again, you can see, you know, longer bristle length and it comes to a finer point. You can see how fine that point is there. And again, you can do a lot of work with this kind of brush. You're not gonna really do a lot of base coating with this brush. This is where you start getting into, uh, you know, other techniques such as uh, shading a model, highlighting a model, um, doing the little details, you know, things of that nature. Again, uh, these brush strokes, uh, talking about brush strokes, essentially, we're only ever really talking about is, you know, applying the paint to the miniature. And so, a few things to talk about when applying paint. Here I have just a regular Citadel bottle of black. It is good to have, whoops, let's give it a shake first. It is often good to have a brush dedicated to drawing paint from a paint pot. If you have a dropper style bottle, such as something like this here, this is MIG ammo line, uh, Vallejo, uh, it has this dropper style bottle. And of course, we're, when we're talking dropper style bottle, you can see here it has a little nozzle on the end. And of course, you can just dunk the paint out onto the palette. Of course, it's and it's uh, these kind of bottles uh, a lot of people prefer as uh, you get much more accurate um, color mixtures because you can simply just do a drop onto your palette and drop onto your palette and, uh, you know, carry on as such where, versus paint pot where, you know, you're kind of reliant upon, um, you know, kind of trying to stay consistent with how much paint you're drawing from your pot. So again, but this is, uh, the Citadel ones here are often more common than, you know, the other paint lines as simply because, you know, their company has been around for a long time and they've been at this for a long time and a lot of hobby shops are just based around their models of stuff. And so again, they're fairly common paints to use and there's no, nothing wrong with these colors. They work just fine. Uh, Paint brands is really uh, just personal preferences, really, um, you know, paint lines. I mean, there are some chemically different things about some paint lines, but, you know, they're pretty much, it's all personal preference, really. So don't, re don't really concern yourself too much about what brand of product you're using. Um, again, for a lot of beginners, this stuff, Citadel paints and Citadel brushes, there's absolutely nothing wrong with you starting out with these. Uh, a lot of people will have their own opinions about them, but again, it's just opinions. So really quickly here, we're just gonna grab a little dollop of paint. And again, it's always good to have a dedicated brush for this job because again, sometimes you can end up drawing too much. Now, as you can see here, I'm drawing from the tab of the paint pot and drawing some paint. And you can see here, I dropped, I grabbed a little dollop of paint and the paint is not very far up the bristle length. And the bristles are the hairs. And again, when we're drawing the paint up on the brush, we don't really want to draw the paint up past there or even up into this metal portion that holds the bristles. This is the furl. This is the bristles and the furl. And of course, the wood of the handle is obviously the handle. And of course, this metal here is crimped onto the handle and the bristles are crimped by the metal. And of course, there's usually some sort of binder here holding the bristles together and holding the bristles in place within this metal thing. And of course, when we get paint on there, it can get inside this portion here and cause paint to get in between the bristles and it causes the bristles to splay outwards, kind of like how this brush kind of looks. And of course you can see here, like this brush here is just really wild and you know crazy looking. And you know, uh, that's just, you know, some brushes that'll happen with age, but otherwise, uh, you know, it's not too huge a deal. And of course, when we're talking brush stroke, you can just simply lay it onto your palette. And I highly recommend you always work from a palette and because that allows you to control your paint. As you can see here, I'm simply just drawing the paint across the palette. And 
as we're working with the brush, and when oftentimes what I'll do is I'll lay the pa uh, paint onto the palette and then I'll rinse this brush. That was the loading brush. And then I'll begin, you know, with another fresh brush. And of course, um, you know, you rinse your brushes uh, fairly often. Uh, if you are a um, first time painter, you know, and you're working with your colors, you know, rinse the brush every once in a while because you do not want paint to dry and to build up in those bristles because again as i mentioned you'll get those hairs splaying all over the place and the the brush will have difficulty maintaining a nice sharp point and as you can see there the brush is maintaining a nice sharp point and this brush has been well used and i still use it all the time now and again it's very important you know take care of it of course there's a, uh, a couple videos on caring for the brushes as well but when we're talking brush stroke yeah like we're talking simply just drawing the paint you don't draw the paint up to the up to the furl. You want to still see some of that bristle color length, the color in the, in the bristles there. You still want to see some of that. So you don't ever really want to draw too much paint up there again because again it's gonna it's gonna shorten the life of your brush, and you're just gonna end up having too much paint on your on your bristles. And so basically that's that's just the really the first portion of you know being concerned with brush stroke. And of course when we are uh, when we have our color on the palette. It allows you really to play with how the color uh, acts. And when you begin to thin down your colors and you get used to thinning down your colors, working from a palette is very key because then you can get into other techniques where you can thin your colors way down and begin to do other fun stuff and just really kind of, you know, start to do really uh, other techniques um, such as, you know, layering and glazing and all these other uh, blends and things like that. And so you get used to thinning out your colors. And when you're working straight from the bottle, you, you are not going to get into those kinds of techniques. It's when you switch to using a palette or even a wet palette, which is another topic for it onto itself, again, are going to become a, be a far better painter in that regards. And so basically, yeah, that's, that's basic brush strokes. I mean, uh, when we're talking about, uh, basically working from the brush that is the very beginning is getting used to those kinds of concepts that you know not because you want to preserve the life of your brush and if you start off with these um habits early on you'll find that you'll become a much uh better painter much quicker and i've seen a lot of people advance fairly quickly being very mindful of their brushes and taking care of their brushes and just adopting these kinds of things, these kind of ideas early on and they are much better painters now. And so that is pretty much the very beginning of, you know, getting used to the concept of brushes, brush strokes, and of course using a palette. It's really, this is the very beginning of it. And so we will continue on with this uh, in the next uh, video.